Good afternoon, Kellen. I really appreciate the opportunity to come on here today to, to share a little about Directional Moments. I'm Dr. Gary Wilder. I am the founder of Directional Moments and with my book along with One Degree, Unleashing Your Focus. And one of the things about me as far as Directional Moments, Directional Moments is something that came about with me probably about maybe just to start before the pandemic hit. I started looking at how people were going in the direction of their lives. And I said to myself, how can I assist people with their direction? And as I was sharing with the group before, and I, I'm not sure if you were in the group that time, but I, the way one degree came about, I was sharing with the group one day that these young men were about to be one degree off of their life. And I said, if you get one degree off, it could change the direction of where you're going successfully in your life. And one of the other coaches said, that is a profound statement that you said that. He said, you might want to write a book about that. Well, I put it kind of on the back burner and let it marinate a little bit. And then as I was doing that, God showed me about directional moments. And directional moments is what I do to assist people with finding direction in their lives, to realign, readjust, and redirect their self, to reposition themselves into going in the right direction. In our lives, we get one degree off of what we're doing. And that one degree could lead us away from our purpose and our destiny. And it's just like with a marriage. I mean, how many times do you hear people say they've been married for 20, 25 years, then all of a sudden they get a divorce? What happened? Well, they started focusing in on the children. They started focusing on their career, but they were not focusing with one another. And then all of a sudden, the children left the household. Their careers started taking another direction. And then they found themselves looking at that person that they've been with for 25 years and said, who is this? I don't even know this person. And now they're so far apart from each other, they don't know how to get back to each other. Well, what I show in directional moments is that although you may be away from each other, I can show you how to get back there. I can show you how to get realigned, readjust, and redirected to get back to the place of success in your life, whether it's a marriage, your business, your career, whatever the case may be. And that's what I do at Directional Moments to help people find their direction in life and what they look to do uh, with their lives. So that's why I tell people, join me on this journey. You know, get a cup of coffee, get some tea, get a cup of water, sit back and enjoy it and come along with the ride with me. Directional Moments is there to lead you in the right direction. Hey, it's Kellen. And today on Diversified Game, I need you guys to make sure you sit up straight because when I bring you a real Marine drill instructor who has seen real combat, for those of you who are, you know, rocking your false valor, uh, talking about the time, maybe some of you, you, you know, some of you sailors were on the boat and you, 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 you scrubbed the boat one time and you saw a flash and that's your war story. I have a real American hero, a real GI Joe who, doesn't just do one thing. So we probably won't cover in depth everything, but he has a great website that you guys can um, see the links, whether you're listening or you're watching, but he's going to get you in line, in step. If you have a young male out there, or maybe an old fool, yeah, he can get him right in tight, especially the old fools, because he might be able to put hands on them. <laughs> Dr. Water, yeah, welcome to Diversified Game. How you doing today? I'm doing good. Great. Thank you for inviting me. I look forward to sharing today. And yeah, I try to direct people. I, I try not to use the drill instructor tactics, but if it has to be done, I'll make it happen. Well, you know, those tactics are the old school tactics where we talk about, you know, um, boys being feminine or, you know, if they're not feminine, just kind of soft. Um, and even for, for girls, cause I got, I had some hard cousins who you, you square up with them, they're going <laughs> to throw them. And I think those, I, I, and I, and I keep hearing things about the, the Marines and the, the different military branches. And it's like, how do you raise soldiers, killers at some point when you still are trying to tell them, you know, everybody gets a trophy. No, you don't. Not if you don't hit the target, not Absolutely. if you keep your boots clean. Um, so so what you're doing with the motivation is needed and however you God sees fit for you to do it. But you, you've given a, a good introduction. And I want to let people know that we met, you know, men to boys. You guys saw the interview with Coach and I, I, I met Doc and, you know, 
He not just does, he's not just a, even a preacher, an author. He also has a football team here, um, a local um, team here. I, I want to talk about it all, but <laughs> at the end of the day, how do you fit it all in the schedule is, is the real thing of what you do and how many hours you're going to focus on this. Like when you wake up, do you already know what you're going to do in a day? Yes. When I, before I even go to bed at night, I plan out my next day because if I don't, I'm going to find myself overwhelmed. So what I do is I kind of compartmentalize it and I look at what is the priority for what I need to do for that day, whether it's working, uh, you know, with the football team right now, we're kind of on a little hiatus due to the pandemic, but I still keep it active and I still work with it. But everything else that I'm doing, what I do is I schedule for that day. What is it that I need to do? What is the priority that I need to do for this day in order to get it accomplished? And then I start plan planning it out from there. I start looking at, okay, what do I need to do for today? What about for the rest of this week? What about for the rest of the month? At least I try to go out at least a month out in advance so that I know exactly what I need to do. And yes, sometimes I do burn the candle, not only even on both ends, but in the middle as well. But I do try to get myself some rest as well as I'm doing all of this also. Well, rest for Marine is what? I mean, shoot, no, nah, ain't no rest. Uh, you, you know, it, it's, you got so many, so many um, things that you can do in multitask um, and, and, and I just, you know, working with the youth, is there something that you're seeing in these youth that parents aren't doing that they used to do? Or is it just the natural change of times where, you know, we have to use a different approach? Because we're, we're not just seeing young people suffer. We're even seeing old people not being able to connect, not being able to find right. a wife. Okay, you know, you got your six figures. You got everything, the car, the house but you still can't find somebody to do life with. And I just can't even imagine and wouldn't want to imagine what some of my personal trips would be by myself. But when right. I bring my family, they're so much better. And I know there's some men who want to have a wife, but they can't connect for what, like, is there something that you're seeing with, you know, the wisdom that you have that, this is what we're not doing. We're not drinking our, our milk. <laughs> we're not eating our Wheaties. You know, what, what is going on in the world? Well, one of the things, when you go back to the youth, one of the things that, as you said, the, the key word in there is connection. One of the things that I'm finding in this society today, because we're so social media driven, and we use the word, and it's a popular website, Instagram, everybody wants something instant. Nobody really wants to go through the process. There's a process to getting a relationship. There's a process to raising your child in today's society. There's a process to being able to connect with people. It's not something you're just going to walk up to somebody and you're going to instantly have a connection. There's, there's got to be a process. And when you look back in the times before, I'll just use this for people who are trying to get a relationship. Instead of trying to start out dating, go back to the old school. Court the woman first. What I mean by that is get to know her as a person. Get to know the whole person. Get to know who she is or get to know who he is as a person. Don't just look at the fact that they have money, they have a house, a car. That doesn't mean anything. All that is is a material thing. What you're looking for is the in-depthness in the person. What is it about them that connects to you? Because you may not connect to them. And then all of a sudden you jump into a marriage and you're maybe a year into it and say, oh, I don't even like this person. That's because you never found time to connect with them. So if I would say to someone who's looking for a mate, male, female, looking for a mate, and they're trying to find that mate, first find the connection. Go back to courting that person. Go back to meeting them, meet them in a public place. Don't get on the phone with them late at night talking about, well, baby, what you wearing? Girl, what you got a guy with? You no, know, no, don't do that. Court the person. Meet out in public, go to a movie, go to a restaurant, go somewhere and just hang out with each other. Once you start to establish a relationship, then maybe that will take it to the next phase. And it's the same thing with parents with your children. Instead of just throwing a phone in front of them and letting the phone raise them, take the phone away from them. When my family and I, when we go out to eat, everybody knows that the phone is put down. 
we're going to actually have a conversation. The phone is not going to be the miss of our conversation. We're going to talk to each other. Once we're done with that family dinner, then you can go back to your social media. You can go back to your phone and do what you want to do. But when we're at the family table, everybody's talking. That's where you find out what's going on in your child's life. That's where you start to make that connection. And now all of a sudden, if the child is having a problem at school, you know it. If they're having a problem with a relationship with a friend, you know it. You don't find out on social media. You find out face to face. So the number one thing is start to have a connection with your family, have a connection with the person you're trying to, to make a life with. Find that connection, and then you'll start to see the life grow, and you'll start to see the years in the life grow as well. Yeah, amen to that. I always tell my friends and even people I work with, if they pick up their child, I tell them, talk to your child. We can, we can talk later after you pick them up. Because it was something when my kids did go to school before they were homeschooled, is getting the story of what happened at school fresh, kind of like a detective. I yes. needed a certain amount of time in case I need to park the car and go in. And it's just crazy how so many people... And, you know, again, I made it an effort to do it, but it's also because of fear. It's also because of other jobs that I've had and other scenarios that I've had in life where I want to know. And so it, it, it's one of those, you know, being a worry wart. Um, but I tell everybody else, you should worry a little more because you don't know what's happening in these crazy, Absolutely. you know. The teacher, you saw the teacher wave. You saw her wave in her dress. What you didn't see was her beard um, and the mustache. And, and, <laughs> and, 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 and y'all know where I'm going with that. You know, yes. this, this is, I'm just keeping it where the traditional values. Um, so the conversation, having the conversation, getting off the phone, that's that's one piece. Um, for your, your book, are you telling, you know, is, is it a book for parents? Is it a book for everybody to kind of like a guidebook for just how to do life? Because not everybody had parents. Not everybody had good parents, you know, and good Correct. role models. So talk about, you know, it's more in depth about the book and why they can go get it on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles and all that. And you can get it also on my website at directionalmoments.com. You can find it there also. But the book itself is a book that kind of touches different phases. It starts out talking about mentoring, finding a good mentor. And these were people that I found in my life that helped me guide me to be the man that I am today. And what I do is I share about mentoring because one of the things people need to understand, a mentor is not supposed to be your friend. A mentor is supposed to be someone to give you direction and guidance. They're supposed to be there to help you move in the direction you're supposed to go to find success in your life. And I talk about those men that helped me guide me to be the man that I am today. And then I move over into talking about the, the aspect of what, how you can get one degree off of your life. And I share about me getting one degree off of my life and how it ended up almost costing me my Marine Corps career because I, I started moving away from, I started moving away from God even further. And I started depending on my own self and I found myself on a power trip. And because of that, I almost lost my career, but, it, it, but God, if it wasn't for God that got me back on track to help me understand, and I had a, a praying wife as well to help me get back on track, I might not be here today being able to talk to you because it would have threw my whole life off track. But because I was able to do that and get back on track, I talked to people about how you can get back on track as well. And then I share some things with some other people who had their one degree moment that they could have gotten off track and what helped them get back in there. And when you read their stories, I'm pretty sure one of those stories you'll connect with, that you'll be able to say, wow, I can see myself in this story. So I share other people's story as well in their testimony and what they did to get back on track. And then I ended off talking about how you can unleash your focus, how focus can help you get on track. I talk about some of the things I had to go through to focus. You know, I wasn't the best shooter when I went into the Marine Corps. I, cause I didn't grow up shooting a weapon. You know, there's, you know, there's a lot of kids that come in the Marine Corps, they were raised up shooting weapons. I wasn't one of those, those people. I didn't understand how to shoot a weapon. I had to learn how to do it. But once I learned it, once I learned how to manipulate it, I became one of the best. And I can say I became one of the best in the Marine Corps 
at doing it. And I could, I could hit a target thousand yards, a moving target without a problem. So I got really good at it. And I talk about what it took for me to get that type of focus and how that focus then helped me to be able to focus now in everything that I'm doing also. And I kind of ended with that and, and helping people guide to unleash their focus, to find their direction, their purpose, their destiny, and what it takes to find that. Because once you find your purpose, you'll find everything you need in life. Well, bringing up the Marine Corps and, you know, you, you did tours, plural, um, and, and, you know, and, 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 it, and I had some, some, some buddies who I can't wait to get to the military until they got called. And then it was everything from, you know, I, I, I can't because I got eye surgery. I got glycoma. Um, I, 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 I want to be, you know, LGBT before even all that could be. Right. But you have people who, you know, they, they, they fantasize on going into a conflict um, and you also have guys here, you know, you're talking about the good old boys when you talk about folks who are just grew up just shooting, grew yeah. up shooting, riding a tractor, they can do it all at the age of 15. Right. But, you know, it's one thing to be prepared for war. It's another thing to come out of war and then to be in peace. And whether you in a war in Chicago, Oakland, um, Iraq, Afghanistan, Sierra Leone, um, how do you become such a friendly person now and I say that because I would never want to see you mad I'm running if you ever get mad I'm running and now I know I got to be a thousand yards away because but how do you because a lot of men like I grew up you know we grew up fighting we grew up doing boxing and martial arts and you, you you're in a place where whether you're in the suburbs or in the hood you're gonna have to fight you know from the 80s to the 90s um and then life is a fight but in a real war and coming out of it, how do you like debrief and say, okay, I, I don't have to be on right now, or does that always stay with you? No, it, it, here's the thing, it did, it used to. Like I said, I had a very, I have a very strong wife. She's one that will put you in check when you need to be in check. When I was a Marine drill instructor, it was on. I could not turn it off. It was on. It was on. And one day I came in and it, I was just still on. And she said something and I snapped at her like she was a recruit. Mm. And she stopped. And she looked at me and she said, um, let's back this up a little bit. I am a Marine's wife, but I'm not a Marine. I'm your wife. So let's turn this. Let's refocus this. Let's try this again. Let's rewind. And let's go back and try this again. And I stopped and I thought about that. And I said, wow, is this, is this how I'm doing all the time with people? Why are people not really gravitating me? Why I'm not connecting with people? So I had to take a look at myself and learn how to turn it on and off when I was in the Marine Corps. If I didn't learn how to do it in the Marine Corps, it would have been really hard for me when I got out of the Marine Corps. So I learned how to turn it on and off. When I came home, the first thing I would do when I got home, I would take that uniform off, I would take me a shower, and the Marine Corps was away from me for the rest of the evening. Mm. And then when I, get, and when I got up in the morning, got my shower and put the uniform on, as I'm driving to work, I turn it on. I know what I have to do. I start focusing in on with my Marines, what has to be done. I start focusing on the mission we have to accomplish. I turn it on. On my way home, I began to turn it off. So I had to learn to switch it instantly on and off. And I had to learn to do that even in today's society. When people try to test me on different things, I know when to turn it on and I know when to turn it off. But I let people know, don't take my meekness for weakness. Because when it comes on, it, it can come on. And I try not to do it because my, I, I'm, I'm a man of God. And I try to witness to everyone about the salvation of Jesus Christ. And I don't want to turn anybody away from that. So I have to be able to learn how to turn it on. And, and it's because of Christ that I'm able to do it. I'm able to switch it on and off to be able to help people find who he is and know more about his goodness. Is, is there any way, you know, and again, you, you know, your, your, your career in the military in 1980, is there any way, especially in that time, that you could have been the person you are now and then been 
effective in the Marines? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. When I came in the Marine Corps, it was a different time. It really was. I mean, and I don't say this in a negative tone, but I want to be realistic about it. The Marine Corps is still, we're still behind the times a little bit when it comes to racial aspect. I mean, we still got a lot of firsts that we're doing. We've been around for over 230 some odd years, and we still got a lot of firsts that we're dealing with. We've never had an African-American coming out of the Marine Corps. We just got our first four-star general in the Marine Corps, first African-American general. We just got him last year. Um, we have a lot of firsts in the Marine Corps to today because we still got some things we got to get over. But okay. at the same time, and, I, and when I came through the Marine Corps at that time, we had a lot of racial things that we were dealing with because at that time, you got to think people were just coming out of the Vietnam War. And a lot of the drill instructors, a lot of the senior enlisted, there were still some racial things that we were dealing with. And me today would have, would have had a hard time, me yesterday, coming to the Marine Corps. I had to come in with all guns blazing. Mm -hmm. I couldn't be a wimp. If I could use it in a street term, I couldn't be a punk. I had to step up and I had to, I had to show my manhood right away. It's none of, none of this thing about, you know, well, everybody's a champion. No, everybody wasn't a champion. You had to work for everything you got. And if you didn't, you weren't going to get it. I couldn't stand there because it was a good old boy network. And I had to work for everything I got. And I don't take nothing for granted. And I'm still working today to get it. And that's why I don't take anything for granted. And I tell the young men today, don't forget your identity. Don't forget who you are. In society, you better know who you are and you better step up as a man or as a woman to get what you wanna get, or guess what? Life is gonna pass you by. Could you imagine the reboot of Full Metal Jacket in today's times when he says, you know, um, only thing from Texas are steers and queers and you don't look like no steer. And now the people will be like, you already know. Exactly. <laughs> I am, and you're like, <laughs> exactly exactly unfortunately that's our society today i mean it's just our society i, I don't agree with the the lifestyle I, but i you know if that's what you do that's what you do but i don't you know me personally i don't agree with it and you have you know and and i i try to explain this even to my kids because uh, you know kids nowadays will call you every name you're old you'll be a bigot you'll be all these things right you say but you gotta understand the way I was raised the way I'm raising you and that some of this stuff is new to us. We didn't see what you're seeing right now. So you're Absolutely. shocking my system. When you tell me in Seattle, a six foot five man is in a dress and he has a full beard. And I'm going to be honest with you. There are a certain population of people you'll never see Kellen fight, do jujitsu with nothing because in case I lose and they got me in a chokehold on my back, Oh, y'all ain't telling that story. Y'all got that argument. But now that whole thing, you know, some of like, actually I am. And I, how the Marine Corps or even society is supposed to just flip like that when we weren't, we weren't raised like that. So I, I'll be old, I'll be ancient, but I don't hate anybody. I don't exactly. hate anybody. Exactly, exactly. And yeah. that's what I tell people. I'm not, I, I don't hate you. I may not agree with you, but because I don't agree with you, doesn't make me homophobic. It doesn't make me all these other terms that are out there. It's just that I don't agree. I don't agree with a person who beats their wife. Does that make me wifeophobic? I don't know. I don't agree with a person who, who uh, abuses alcohol. I don't agree with a person who gambles and, and throw their money away and then they lose their family because of that. I don't agree with a lot of things. That's just one of the things I don't agree with. But because I don't agree with it doesn't mean I can't have a conversation about it. It doesn't mean I hate you. I don't hate you. I don't hate anyone. I just don't agree with your lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And, and I, I want to make it clear, just, just clear, because uh, nowadays, if you say something, and if it's even like in a debate form, people will make you seem like, you, you know, they want to cancel you. I can't be canceled because I'm not looking for their approval. I'm not of this world, so I can't be canceled. 
And people say, what do you mean by that? That sounds like some rich talk. No, no, no. That's some wealth talk of a different, of a different, if you don't get it, you don't get it because, you know, money never made me um, ever. Now, working with the youth, um, you know, a lot of times you have a lot of people who would love to be teachers. They love to work with the youth, but it does not pay a lot of money unless you're going after like government contracts and one of the lucky few that can prime on a contract. Um, how do you how do you make that work for that person who says, you know what, I want to do more of this work, especially in South Florida, but am I going to be able to even pay my bills? How do you get involved in some of this? Because even preaching, you know, um, people get into preaching sometimes just for the money. And that's the wrong reason to get in, in, in it. You know, people say, oh, I can't, I can't be a preacher anymore. There was no money in it. Right. Because <laughs> you and, weren't called. Ex exactly. See, that's the thing about it. See, some went and some were called. Mm -hmm. See, one of the things I wouldn't know anyone, and I say this not in a negative aspect, I don't know anyone who would want to be a preacher because it's not about standing up on a stage and giving a 30, 45 minute sermon. That's not what preaching, that's what, not what ministry is about. Ministry is when you get those 2 a.m. calls that someone family member just passed away. Somebody's in the hospital and you have to go and you have to do funerals. I just did a funeral this past, this past weekend. That's not a fun thing to do, to have to minister to a family who just lost a loved one to a family who just lost a child. You have, to, you have to be there for them and you have to consult them. It's a 24 seven thing. It's not just standing up on a pulpit and giving a word. That's not what ministry is about. So if you went into ministry or you say, I wanna be a preacher, then you're gonna burn out. And the reason you're gonna burn out is because of the fact you were not called to do it. And trust me, I never asked to do this. I never wanted to do this. I never sought to do this. God called me and I said, Lord, I don't want this. He said, no, you're going to take it. And sure enough, I said, if I, he said, if you don't do it, trust me, there's something else that you're going to miss out on. And I said, you know what, let me just go ahead and do what God called me to do because I don't want to miss out on any of his blessings. So he called me to do it. And when I, I, I find fulfillment in doing it, it's not easy. It's not something that, that is easy by no means of the imagination, but it's something I feel fulfilled when I do help someone out. And it goes back to the aspect of, of, of teaching. Teachers that do it and they do it because they love it, they're called to do it. Because like you said, there's no money in teaching. That's why you see teachers all across the country protesting. It's like, you gotta give us some money. We're raising someone else's child and you don't wanna pay us for it. I mean, they have to take care of their families as well. So when they have that calling and that passion to do it, they're called to do that. And anyone that has a calling to work with you, there's not a lot of money in it. In fact, there's not money in it at all. That's why you, you find different ways of different streams of income. That's a whole nother topic. I like to talk about streams of income, but you find different streams of income and different things to do to help subsidize what you find your calling in. Because no, there's no money in preaching. There's nothing in there, but when you find other means and subsidize, like I said, I don't work for money. I let money work for me. I got streams coming in. That's why I'm able to do what I'm able to do because God called me to do it. So I knew when he called me to do it, he was going to equip me to be able to do it by giving me the financial needs to be able to do that. So yes, you have to have a calling to do. If you're going to work with youth, you're going to have to have a calling to do it and then let God give you the finances to continue to do it. Amen. Amen. And if you guys want to learn more about those streams, I want you to go to the website you see in the description, whether you're listening or watching, because, you know, you're learning and you hear the book, but those streams, um, what, what I don't want you to do is just get a piece of it, try to do it on your own and then say, wait, it didn't work for me. You really need coaches. You need mentors. You need leaders, just like teachers. I have a friend, a teacher in New Orleans and not even two weeks time, there's been a school shooting. She done broke up a fight. I mean, this is something that, and, and I've done that job right out of college. It is not fun. And, and I love the youth, but I'd rather work with the youth in the psych ward 
I'd rather work with the youth in the jail than be a teacher in a public school or even maybe a private school, but especially a public school. And it's the reason why my kids aren't in school um, at this point, because I haven't found one. I can, I trust it, you know, the system, because it, it's just too much going on. Even if you're at a great school, people are yeah. coming in, former students, you know, identity crisis and shooting up the place. And you're like, was life really that bad? But Absolutely. something is off. Uh, what, to talk about a community give back that you're doing that you haven't already mentioned. Well, one of the things, for instance, with Men to Boys, the community things we do there is, is several things. I mean, we do, we try to do back to school uh, giveaways. We try to do different things to, we go out and we take the youth on different types of, of trips. We take them to, and we introduce them. One of the things we try to do is give them exposure. Mm -hmm. We try to give them exposure to things that they may not have exposure to. We work with several different organizations where they have the tools that they can go in there and learn about graphic art. They can learn about if they want to get into audio communication, how to do that. If they want to learn how to fly, uh, if they want to do different things. We try to get them the exposure. We get them around people who have that. If they're looking to be a lawyer, we bring a lawyer in or we have a lawyer come in and talk to them about what it takes to be a lawyer. If they want to be in law enforcement, we bring in law enforcement. Talk about what it be, means to be a law enforcement or whatever they would look to be. We try to get them exposed to that. So that's some of the ways we give back. Uh, with my, my community organization, with my football team, we would do annual turkey drives uh, where we give away turkeys. To, our last count, we gave over a thousand turkeys away to families in the area. Uh, we did back to school uh, donations. We also did what we call a food giveaway. We set up food for people to come in, whether they were homeless or just had some struggles in life. They, we have a food drive, that we do a food drive. And there was different things that we would do to try to help the community. So there's a lot of involvement that we do, either with myself, with men, the boys, or what I did with my football team, where we try to give back to the community to show that we're just not an organization out there trying to do something just to do it. We're out there trying to do it to help people to get to the next level in their lives. And if people go to your website, directionalmoments.com, um, you know, can you talk about any fees and ranges? Because if you say fees, you know, to, to our community, if you say $2, even in 20 years, it better be $2. Right. Uh, but, you know, if they say, look, I do have a youth who needs help or I do even want to get myself on track. Can you coach me into success? What does that look like? Timelines and ranges of fees? Because it's always interesting to me how people say, I don't have any money, but then they come out of a $60,000 car and have $300 on their feet, but you didn't have any money to co be coached. Mm -hmm. and get right. Right. <laughs> well, when you go to directionalmoments.com, when you get there, um, you'll see the different coaching niches that, that is involved. There's purpose coaching, there's marital and premarital coaching, there's uh, emotional intelligence, there's all different types of coaching. And I really don't talk about the fees there because what I do is I, I have a, a conversation with the person, a little, a little 30 minute conversation with the person. And then what I do is at that point, we talk about what they're trying to get. And then as we get into it, then I can set up, a because I'm not structured with just an investment, because I don't call it a fee. It's an investment. You're investing in your life to be better than what you are now. So what I do is say, well, let's talk about the investment, because everybody's not at the same economic status as someone else. So what I do is I try to find out a way to do it. The fees, could, the, the, the coaching could start out, you know, as low as $200 and it could go up. It could be less than that, depending on what the investment could be, because I try to find out what the person is looking for before we talk, start talking about the investment itself. So that's why I don't really put the investment on the website, because I want to make sure that the person get the best of me based upon what they're looking for. Gotcha. That, that makes sense. And, you know, investing in yourself is the best investment one can do. It's 
always interesting to see people, you know, we'll go to college, <laughs> we'll even take more money than we need because we act yeah. like it's free money. I uh, thank God for paying Sally Mae back um, all her, <laughs> all her, yeah, all her funds. But um, we don't necessarily look at it like um, an investment. We look at it as, oh well, they told us we got to go to school, and you know, many people, you know, maybe don't even finish. So it's the investment side, um, you know, of of the game. Now, if they come to you, because some folks will say, well, man, I'm not trying to be preached to. I, I like what you're saying. I need that military. But, you know, um, is, is it all, is, is there any cookie cutter or, or, you know, or is everybody kind of based on, you know, where they're at? Where It's based on where they are. I That's one thing. And just to let it be known, that's not what we do at Directional Moments. I don't preach to you. What I do is give you hardcore information. When I When you come into one of my coaching sessions, you're going to get the best of me. I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to listen to what you're saying and you're going to get the best of me. And I'm going to give it to you just straight. I don't want to put it out there hardcore, but I'm going to give it straight to you in your face because I expect I'm going to give you, you're, you're going to get some homework. You're going to get some things that you're going to have to invest in. And if you don't come back with what I asked you to come back with, I'll give you another week to say, okay, maybe let's, let's not do it tonight. Let's do it another time. But if you consistently don't bring back the information to try to better yourself, then I'm just going to let you know. Maybe now is not the time for you to get coached because you're not committed to it. See, I don't look for someone to come in there just to say they're doing it. I'm looking for commitment. I'm looking for you to be committed to changing yourself and to better yourself. If you're not committed to it, please don't, don't come to me. Find somebody else that you could talk to. I'm looking for commitment. Because at the end of the day, I'm going to give you results. And you're going to see a turnaround in your life. I guarantee it. If you follow the structure that I'm giving you, I guarantee you're going to see a, a change in your life. You're going to say, oh, my goodness. This is what I was looking for. This is what I wanted. Because I'm not going to give you some cookie cutter mold. It's going to be designed specifically for you. So if you're ready to change your life, join me on this journey. And I guarantee you, you'll see results. That's, that's great to hear because a lot of people need it. I actually, um, and, I, and um, I saw this YouTube channel, one of the channels where the ladies tell you about jobs. And there was even jobs where people are looking for friends and they'll pay just to talk to someone, just to Zoom somebody. That's where we're at because the connection, for whatever the reason, people can't connect and it's, um, you know, so they say it's easier to pay. Then you get into the pay versus 900 number. If anybody of y'all remember what those are, yes. or, you know, <laughs> ver versus are you an escort? Are you, what, what are you? But, you know, a lot of these sites are legit that people are just on there and you can charge a dollar a minute or whatever it is, but people can't connect for various reasons. Let the people know again where they can connect you in any last words. I don't want to give them too much because I want them to okay. go to your website. I want them to get the, the game directly from you, get the book, make a review on Amazon and, you know, all the other good stuff that you have on there. Yes. Go to the website. The website is Directional Moments. That's what it is. Directionalmoments.com. When you get there, you'll go to the homepage. You'll be able to see uh, a list of things that, is offered through directional moments. When you go to my about page, I talk about my purpose, my vision, my mission. I'm so big on that because I do have a purpose. I do have a mission. I have a vision of what I'm trying to do. And then I talk about the various aspects of the coaching. When you get there, you click on it. We'll have a conversation. Like I said, I won't take up much of your time because the thing is you may not connect with me. We may have that 30 minute conversation and you may not connect with me. And we may not be, I may not be the fit for you. I'll try to fit, help you find someone. But if we can get a connection, then we'll start that journey together to help you on your road to getting to your purpose, your destiny, to find the fulfillment in the direction God would have you to go. So join me, like I said, on that quest with directional moments so that you can get the place where you're supposed to be. I'll show you, I'll talk to you about an asthma, a resection, an intersection, and a back asthma. That's military terms. 
but I'll show you how to do it in civilian terms to get you back to the direction you're supposed to go so that you can get to the place where God would have you to go. Because I'm telling you, if you're looking to succeed, you're looking to lead. And if you're looking to do that, trust me, when you discover your purpose, your purpose will discover you. So you guys are gonna get some training that you need it. You might even get some old MREs just in case <laughs> these trying times, you might need them for what's to come. You guys have gotten the game. Now the most important thing to do is to follow the website, follow the directions and share the game with someone else. It will change their life. You be blessed y'all. Have you ever been curious about visiting Africa? Which African country were you interested in? Kenya, Nigeria, Uganda, South Africa, Ethiopia? Which country are you interested in? My good friend, Kellen Cash Coleman, came up with a course called My First Trip to Africa that'll guide you through this process. It's only $20, and in this course, you'll learn about passports, visas, vaccinations that you need before you go there, as well as a budget, uh, how much the trip is gonna cost. He also talks about what you should pack, uh, what you should take with you, how you should travel on a budget. Did you know that 100 US dollars is worth 1,000 South African Rand and over 10,000 Kenyan shillings? So imagine what you can do with $100 back home. I say back home because I'm from Sudan, I'm African, I already know how it's like. I know that you know when you convert Canadian and American money, it goes a long way when you're traveling across Africa. So if you're curious, um, if, if Africa is a place that you've always wanted to go, always wanted to move there, Kellen Cash is the person to ask. Check out the course, there's a little preview you can listen to. Um, before you actually purchase it. If you're interested in this course, visit www.diversifiedgame.com. Don't miss out. Game over.